Hi there, so I thought I'd do a short video about one of the excuses I get a lot from non-vegans when I talk to them about what the animals go through and why it's immoral, even if they were treated better, to be paying for them to be killed at all. So, one excuse that we often get is, well, vegans kill more animals than non-vegans, don't they? So, there's going to be people who are going to be talking about things like crop deaths, so, um, when you're farming the crops, um, then when you harvest them, um, what about the animals that might get killed, such as insects and mice harvesting them? So, yes, it's really actually pretty frustrating when people use this excuse, because, first of all, I think an important point to make is that the definition of veganism is to avoid animal exploitation and cruelty as far as is possible and practicable. So, I mean, this acknowledges, using the possible and practicable part, that it's impossible to be perfect, and just by living, we're always going to cause some harm. So, I mean, just by walking around, we might be training on some insects. But, I mean, this is very different from intentional killing. In the same way, like, if you drive a car, you might run over a human being by accident. But if that did happen, then that's obviously very different from going out and murdering someone. So, if accidentally killing a human is a very different matter from murdering a human on purpose, then why wouldn't you apply the same logic to non-human animals? So, now to address the claim that non-vegans try to make, that vegans are killing more animals than non-vegans, I mean, I think it's important to think about what actually happens to most of the crops that are being farmed, and what, what do you think most farmed animals eat? So, a lot of non-vegans might think, oh, it's, it's, um, it's really harmful producing all this soy, and then they'll think, oh, well, this soy is being produced for vegans. Well, actually, the crazy thing about that is that they're completely overlooking the part of the fact that actually the vast majority of the world's soy is fed to farmed animals. So, for example, if you go and buy some cow flesh, chances are a lot of soy is going to have been fed to that cow, and so you're, you're probably going to be contributing to more soy farming than if you ate soy directly. So then not only do you actually contribute to more crop deaths, but then you're also paying for that cow to be tortured and murdered. So really by not being a vegan, you're multiplying the crop deaths. And as well as that, you're also directly paying for animals to be tortured and murdered. So yeah, I mean, once you realise that, I just think it's absurd to be claiming that vegans are killing more animals than non-vegans I mean also I mean I, I think it if people really genuinely cared about the insects and the mice that might be killed in harvesting then they'd also care about the cows the chickens the fish the pigs all these animals and then they'd have gone vegan anyway because they'd care about animals and then they, they wouldn't be making these excuses in the first place but yeah, I really like to think it's important to realise that actually non-vegans are c causing more crop tests than vegans, and that's on top of the torture and murder of these animals that they're paying for, so yeah, it's just a, an absurd argument really. And the other thing I think is important to note is that we, we can actually move to a society where we don't have crop deaths, because we can have vertical farming, where the farming is done indoors, with uh, several layers of plants on top of each other, we can completely eliminate the crop deaths. Um, at the moment, that's not going to happen because we live in a non-vegan world. So, if people don't care about cows, pigs, chickens, sheep, etc., then why the hell are they going to care about the insects and the mice get, that get killed by crop deaths? Uh, but once we get to a vegan world, and when these animals aren't being tortured and murdered directly, then the next step will be, I think, that people will think about, well, how can we reduce or minimise these crop deaths? And so I think we will end up shifting towards vertical farming and eliminating the crop deaths. But that's not going to happen as long as the world isn't vegan. So, uh, as things stand, uh, it's impossible, really, to be vegan but not contribute to the crop deaths. I mean... You might be in a lucky position where you can grow all your own vegetables uh, and in a veganic way, and, and if so, then great. But the reality is, for the vast majority of vegans, there's no choice but to pay for plant-based food that involves crop deaths. But 
just because that's the case. That's certainly not a justification to be going and paying for animals to be tortured and murdered and sent to the slaughterhouse. I mean, yeah, it's just absolutely absurd, really. So, yeah, if you're not vegan and you've been using this as an excuse, then I really hope you're going to go vegan now. And I also recommend that you go and have a look at Dominion on YouTube. This actually shows standard practice footage worldwide of what the animals go through. And actually, if you see that for yourself, I think that quickly the crop testing would go out to the window because you, you'd see the victims there and you'd think like well really there's no excuse to be paying for that to happen i mean just imagine if you're in the position of the pig the cow the chicken whatever animal you're paying for to be tortured and murdered is there really any excuse i mean imagine if a member of your family was murdered and then uh, the murderer said oh it's okay because you pay for crop deaths to happen i mean it's absurd, isn't it? Like, it in no way justifies murder. So, yeah, please go and have a look at Dominion. I'd also recommend having a look at the most important speech you'll ever hear by Gary Yorofsky. I just think that's so inspiring. He says so many great things. Uh, yeah, after going vegan, the next step is to actually speak up for the animals uh, and become an activist. So, if you're already an activist, then amazing, and please keep going with that. Uh, if you're a vegan who's not an activist, then uh, please get active because, um, I mean, really all that's required for evil to flourish is for the good to do nothing. So, I mean, one thing I'd recommend is joining a local street outreach group. And um, what, one I'd recommend in particular is Anonymous of the Voices, which is an international organisation which is taking place in hundreds of cities all over the world. Um, yeah, w what we do is we stand in the streets, um, showing the public standard practice footage of what the animals go through, and then when they start to have a look at it, we talk to them about it, and a lot of people do go vegan, so yeah, I recommend going to join the uh, jointhecube.com, and on there you can see all the locations, it takes place all over the world, so maybe you've got some near to you, or... Maybe you might be travelling somewhere where it's taking place, so go and check it out. And then what you can also do is you can apply to start your own Anonymous for the Voices chapter in your own area and get that going. And I think that's going to make so much difference because not only are you putting yourself onto the street, but if you actually start it up, you're hopefully getting out lots of other vegans to speak up for the animals when they might not have been doing anything themselves otherwise. So, yeah. And every time you do one of these events, even if you only turn one person vegan, it's worth bearing in mind that like, the average non-vegan pays for maybe 300 animals to be murdered every year. So, if the average non-vegan has 40 years left to live, then they would have been going to pay for about 12,000 animals to be murdered in over their lifetime. So even if you just get one person to go vegan, that's 12,000 animals saved. And in fact, it's probably going to be a lot more because that vegan will probably inspire others to go vegan. And they'll probably all inspire others to go vegan. And so it's a domino effect. So just turning one person vegan... That could be millions of animals saved, maybe billions. I mean, who knows how many people will end up getting inspired by that domino effect. And that's just for one person. Now, every time you do a Cube of Truth, you're probably turning loads of people vegan. So, yeah, just for giving up, like, a few hours of your time. I mean, you could be saving billions of animals. So, I mean, you don't know, like, the uh, over time, like, we're gradually shifting towards a vegan world. Uh, by doing that one cube of truth, you might inspire someone to go vegan who ends up making so much difference that we have a vegan world a few years sooner. And just think over those few years how many lives are going to be saved. So, yeah, I just think, I mean, it's not like anything else really um, in, in terms of the amount of difference you have the potential to make just by giving up a bit of your time. So, yeah, I just think it's, it's the best possible thing you can do. So please get out there and speak up for the animals as much as you can and hopefully see some of you on the streets soon.